We are live. Let's talk about today's agenda for, um, for React. We're going to talk about React APIs. So for, for today, what we're going to be focused on, on is we're going to be focused on React APIs. And you're going to find that after the functional components section. So up to this point, we have covered everything you need in order to finish to-do list. So um, you should prioritize finishing to-do list after box generator. So box generator and then to-do list. And after that, I recommend actually going ahead, going straight to the API section. And we're gonna talk about what a promise is right now. So a promise is when there is some code that could take some time to run and we don't know how long it could take to run but we want some other code to run while doing it. I'll give an example of real life first before we talk about code. So um, has anyone ever had to wait for a package that they have to sign off on at home? So you have to be home. So yes. Be yes. Yeah, okay. So imagine you have a couple tasks that you wanna do, right? Let's, uh, let's go into our code here. I'm, creating, uh, I'm not in React functional components anymore. I'm going to create a new folder. Zero five React API. Okay. And then in this folder, I'm going to create a new file. I'm just going to call this uh, promises.js. Okay. So let's talk about what a promise is. So imagine I am, uh, imagine you have to. Uh, be home to sign off on a, on an, it's usually for those important packages, right? It's not just like some random delivery, but it's like really important secure packages that you have to sign off on. Sign off on an important package that will be delivered. And when this package gets delivered, do you guys always know the exact time or is it like an approximate time and we don't know exactly? It's an approximate time. Exact time, approximate. Yeah, it's usually like an approximate time. They might say like, hey, expect a package anywhere between like you know, 10 to 12 a.m. So delivered at an approximate time. Okay, delivered at an exact approximate time. However, you have several other tasks to do. For example, you have to uh, make coffee, text, text uh, family, do homework, right? Our uh, coding dojo assignments. So what do you think would be more efficient? Option A, don't do anything at all until the package gets there. Then I can make coffee, text family, and do homework. That's option A or option B. Um, while waiting for the package, do as many tasks as I can. And then when the doorbell rings with the package, sign off on package and go back to what I was doing. <laughs> I don't know, that was long. That was a long little thing. I got carpal tunnel from that. Okay, so um, which option is more effective use of your time and energy? Option B. Option B, okay. Okay, cool. So in programming, we're gonna go with option B as well. So imagine There's some process that can take some that that can take an undetermined amount of time. We don't know how long it's going to take. One such process is an API call. 
API calls, and well, what is an API? We can talk about all that, but let's this uh, API. API calls are an example of this type of workflow. It's called it's called a promise. A promise is a promise is when you have some code that needs that that is running and while you're waiting for that code to finish running, you can tell the computer to do some other lines of code instead of waiting for a certain line of code to finish executing, okay? So that's what a promise is. So a promise is, let's say I have some code and this code is maybe I'm going to make an API call. What is an API call? An API call is I'm making a I'm making a request to an external source on the web, for example, like Pokemon API. Well, this this is an example that you guys can be working with. Pokemon API.co. If you go to Pokemon API.co question mark limit is equal to one thousand, you'll actually get back all this data related to a bunch of Pokemon. And in JavaScript, I can actually make a request to this particular URL. And in order to make that request, I can use a fetch. There's a built-in function called fetch, which allows me to give it the URL of an API endpoint. And what is an API? API stands for Application Programming Interface. An API is, you can think of an API as a, is a source for some external data, data that you can use in your application. Source of an external data or even functions that you can use in your application. So for example, if I want to use, if I want to show a page with a bunch of Pokemon, I could hard code my database with a bunch of Pokemon when, when I have a database. Or I could just put a bunch of Pokemon in an array and hard code it. And then maybe I would have to put all their stats and all this other information, not just their names. You guys know Pokemon, right? Does anyone not know Pokemon by any chance? Maybe I can use a different example. Let me use a different example. Uh, let's do something that we can all relate to. Um, Stocks and crypto, uh, finance. So let's do um, Coin Gecko API. This is a this is an API. An API is just think of it as some uh, website or some application that will provide you with data if you request request data from it. Coin Gecko API will provide you with cryptocurrency data. So let's. I haven't actually checked the markets today. So let's. It's a great excuse for me to check the markets too while teaching at the same time. Um, so crypto API documentation, I click on this one and I'll send you guys the links to this. And then I'll, I'll get this page with a bunch of, um, oops, let me go back to that. I'll, I'll get, end up on this page with a bunch of uh, stuff here. I wanna go to this coin section and I want to go to coin slash markets and then click try it out and then type in USD for US dollars so that all the cryptocurrency, it'll show the cryptocurrency's price in relation with the US dollars. Apparently the Euro crashed yesterday completely. Um, anyways, so then if I click execute, I'll get back a bunch of information. And if I want to see a better version of this, what I can do is, um, yeah, if you, uh, I can actually go on this link right here. You see this HTTPS, this thing right here. 
I can copy this. I can actually paste it on the browser and it'll look, by default, it'll look like this, okay? But I have this extension where it'll look like this. I'm gonna send you guys this link on the Zoom chat right now. And I'll also put this link in this particular file and go ahead and click on it. Let me know what it looks like for you. Does it show you in the raw format or the formatted format? <laughs> Raw. Okay, cool. So we're gonna make it so you guys can all see it in a nice pretty format in just a second, but in our code, let me just go ahead and um, instead of the Pokemon API, let's do the cryptocurrency API. I'll put that right here. So if you're watching this lecture at a different time, uh, here's the, I'm gonna be pushing this to GitHub and promises.js, you'll be able to play around with this API if you want. Okay, cool. Um, I'm gonna paste that link there. So when you guys view it, it's gonna show you the raw version. Now, if you wanna see the prettier version, uh, this is the extension that I have. I have an extension called JSON Viewer. So um, this is the one that I'm using. If you wanna use the same one I'm using, I'm gonna send you guys the link to that. It's called JSON Viewer. Type a one in the chat after you have installed this extension. Pasting the link to it in the chat. Should be a pretty quick install. Just click a button. And once you do that, um, once you click on that link and then in Google Chrome, you, know, you have over a million users that use this extension. So it's a very popular extension. Um, who's the publisher? Publisher is some tech company in Sweden, in Stockholm. Okay, so what we can do is we can take a look at our API link again. If you refresh the page, it might still show it raw, I'm not sure. But let me know with the number two in the chat if you're able to view this option here where it shows you, where, where at least it now works now. It looks formatted. It works now? Okay, good. Now, now you'll be able to work with APIs a little bit better. Otherwise, I don't know about you, but there's no way I would be able to parse this. I, I'd have to be like, okay, Bitcoin. I don't know where Bitcoin even ends. <laughs> you know, where's Ethereum at? Oh, Tether? Uh, yeah, cool. But with this, I'm like, okay, we have an array. Okay, we have an array. And Bitcoin, what kind of data type is Bitcoin right now inside of? It's a, a, a dictionary more. Dictionary? Uh -huh. What do we call a dictionary in JavaScript? A set. Objects. Object. Perfect. Object. Object. Good job. Good job. And then this object is inside of what kind of data structure is the object inside of? An array. array. An array. Perfect. Did we work with arrays of objects before? Yes. Inside the form. Yeah, yesterday, right? Uh, all the pets, each pet, we put it into an object. Cool. So we're going to be doing the same thing again. We're going to be working with an array of objects. You will see an array of objects in, uh, let me just refresh this. I don't feel like clicking each time. Okay. You'll see an array of objects a lot in this course, and it'll be on your exam as well and on many course items. Perfect. Okay. Hey, Kendra, I see, I see uh, one there. Is your um, JSON viewer working? Well, I just got it there. You got it? Okay. Good stuff. So yeah, um, so this API provides to us the most recent coin data or like cryptocurrency data. So here's an uh, array and the first object is Bitcoin and it gives us some properties like ID, Bitcoin, symbol, BTC, name, Bitcoin with a capital B. Image is probably like a link to the Bitcoin logo. Um, current price, 19,000. So it's around the same price. Market cap, market cap rank, all this good stuff. Uh, all time high, almost hit 70, but then it's totally just dropped. It's dropped 71 percentage points uh, since the all time high. So shout out to everybody that bought it at 69,000. Um, and yeah, all time low. Well, I don't know if that's, that, that's all time low should be like zero, right? But um, I think it's all time low from a certain date, so 2013. So, okay, that's Bitcoin. Here's Ethereum, 1,084 is the price and so on. So we have this data 
And we don't have to create this data on our own. We can actually consume this data that is provided by the CoinGecko API. So let's take a look at how we can consume it. So fetch is how you can consume an API. And then you just put the API URL. You, you, when you see an API URL, we call it an API endpoint. And when you make a call to an external API, it's kind of like the delivery person. Uh, that's gonna come at an approximate time. The computer doesn't know exactly how long it'll take to get back this data because look, this is an external API. Do we have control over an external API and how fast their servers are running and how busy they are? No. No, we have no control over that. So one day they could be really, really busy and therefore the network speed would be slower. So it might take a little bit longer time to get back data from this API on one day versus another day, or even at a certain time of the day, it might be more busy than another time of the day. We don't know. Another thing, this API, uh, they might, who knows, maybe they migrated to a new server and maybe things are just slower in general all the time. Anything can happen that can change how fast we get this data back. So when you make an API call, it's similar to waiting for the delivery person. We don't know exactly when they're gonna arrive. We know approximately they're gonna arrive at a certain time, time window. So, so when you make a fetch call, you're gonna have this part, dot then. And inside of the dot then, dot then means um, after, when we get back the data, what to do. It's kind of like when the delivery person comes back, what do we do? We're gonna sign off, right? But um, we can have some other lines of code run while it's waiting. So let's take a look at this. That then, let's call this, uh, the, the, the syntax here is whatever response we get back from the API, we're gonna put it back in this thing called dot then, and we're gonna represent it by this word, res. You can represent it as response. You can call it data. You can call it anything you want. Let's see what the learning platform calls it. in the fetch section. Calls a response, okay. Response and then return response.json, okay. So let's do that. So I'm gonna put a, oh, so okay. I'm, I, I basically have a function as an input to the dot then. Dot then is a built-in function and I'm giving it a function as an input. What do you call this function that I give as an input to another function call? Call function. Callback function. Perfect. Good. Callback. Callback. Yep. Good. And then uh, if there's only going to be one parameter, I don't even need the parentheses here. I can just say response. And then here I can say return response.json. This is so that the uh, computer can parse the JSON. So JSON is a format that, you know how we had to like look at this so that we can understand it better. We had to click this so that we can understand this better. Otherwise it, it was hard to read and understand. Computer has a similar issue with data from the internet. It needs to, it needs some line of code for it to understand this better. So that's the response.json part. So that um, parse the response as JSON. Parse just means so we can read the response is JSON. J and JSON is just an object or JSON is like uh, key value pairs. So it's kind of like a dictionary in Python. And then after this dot then, we have another dot then. And then we're gonna do this again and we're just gonna have it uh, console.log response from API is and let's just see what the response looks like here. Okay, and if I were to run this file, uh, let me close out this other one, Control C. Node, oh, I forgot to do that bug catching, but that's okay. I run this, a uh, fetch is not defined. Wait, what? Fetch is not defined.
why, why the fetch should just work. FETCH, FETCH. Isn't it supposed to be inside a script or something like that? Is that that, that's true? true, but this is a JavaScript file right here. So it says fetch is not defined. Why is that? Oh, uh, okay. It's not a standard uh, Node.js method. Okay, so we can do it in an HTML file that contains uh, a script tag. Okay, so let's, let's do that. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys this example in an HTML file so that it'll actually work. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut this out. I'm, I'm gonna leave it here for now. Let's take a look at what it looks like in an actual project. So I'm gonna actually build a React project and show you how making an API call works. And you could do it in the HTML file with a script tag, or let's just do it in a React project, which is gonna save us some time. Let me see the out of wall of pets, CD out of functional components. I'm in Merm July. Let me CD into 05 React APIs, and then NPX create, React app. And then I'm gonna let's call this uh, 01 crypto API. So it's creating a project called crypto API. And I'm gonna show you guys how can we use fetch to receive data from another source. And what is a promise? We're gonna talk about how, like, what is a promise? What is asynchronous code? And uh, we're gonna learn about it from there. So, quick question. Yes. With fetch, let's just say you have your own JSON file. Can you use fetch to fetch your own JSON file? Or something like that, if that makes sense. Yeah, uh, so if there's a JSON file that's being hosted somewhere, you can use, uh, and, and if, if it's publicly accessible, then you can, uh, you, can, you can access it. This is a JSON file right here that's publicly available from CoinGecko. And there's one that you're gonna be using for the Pokemon assignment. It's gonna be the Pokemon API, .co. I said limit is equal to 1,000, so it shows me 1,000 Pokemon. Let's do 10,000 just in case there's more. Yeah, there's a lot more than, uh, uh, not a lot more. There's, there's 1,154 Pokemon. So, this is a JSON file right here, and it's going to give me all this data. I see. Cool. So React project's ready for me to uh, start going into. So I'm going to CD into the React project, 01 Crypto API. And what we're going to do is I'm going to just do npm start, just, so, just to make sure everything works. Let me get rid of this thing. Okay. Okay, cool. This is the default React application. And what I'm gonna do here is uh, go into the source folder, app.js, get rid of everything. And I'm just gonna have uh, an H1 that just says, crypto API. Okay, this says crypto API. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a component. Right click on the source folder, new folder, components. And then inside the components folder, I'm gonna create a component. So um, let's call this uh, crypto.jsx. Actually, let me call this a uh, fetch crypto. JSX. It doesn't matter what I call it. I'm just want to name it something like that. So import React from React, perfect. And then I'm going to create a functional component. I could uh, create const and the name of the file fetch fetch crypto is equal to an arrow function, and then export 
default name of the file, fetch crypto. And then inside of this arrow function, let's just have it return something sim very simple. Return parentheses, enter. I'm just gonna have it return like an H1 that just says, what's that? Let's just make sure it gets connected with the app.js. So I'm gonna go here and say import fetch crypto from the components folder. And then uh, here I'm gonna go ahead and render it by saying fetch crypto as if it's HTML, as if it's an HTML tag. I'm just gonna render it like that. Let's see if it's connected. We should see this waza in H1. Perfect. We see the waza waza. Perfect. Okay. So instead of uh, a waza, let me just go ahead and give this a div. And in this div, it'll say, uh, it'll have a button. It'll say, click me to fetch all the coin data. Fetch recent, recent uh, cryptocurrency data. Cryptocurrency data. Is cryptocurrency one word? Oh, no. It doesn't matter. But, okay. So here's a button. So now we just have a button. So let's make it so when we click on this button, it will make an API call, right? But um, before we do that, I just wanna show you guys something here. Let's, let's go to that, uh, that code that we had in promises.js, this code. It should work now. I'm gonna just get rid of it from here. And I'm just gonna paste it here. And let me make the format a little bit easier to read. Would you mind explaining the dot then again? Yeah, I'm actually gonna explain it from scratch again. Okay, um, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just wanted it to at least console.log something for us. Okay, so as soon as this component loads up, it's gonna run this fetch command. Fetch allows us to you know, talk to an API URL to get data from it, to fetch data from an external source. So is that clear on the fetch part before we get to that then? Just give it a URL of an API right here, and it'll give us some data. Okay. So let's see what uh, what we see in the console. Okay. Console.log response from API is this. Okay. So in order to see the console, I'm going to click inspect with the console. There we go. Let me just refresh it. Response from the API is this, and it does a double console.log because of React. Uh, React does double console log sometimes. But here it is. Here's our array of objects just like we saw an array of objects here. Here's an array of objects, right? So we see it here in our code. Now let's, let me talk about the dot then and what that is doing. So let's refer back to that analogy with the, the delivery for the package that where you need to sign off. Or we can even do a, a Another analogy would also be, imagine like you're walking your dog. Has anyone played fetch with their dog? Does anybody's dog actually fetch? Mine does not fetch. Mine just gets lost. But um, if your dog actually fetches, maybe you throw a ball, right? And then yeah. is it exact how long the dog is gonna take to come back with the ball? Or it can vary based on different things. It can vary. It can vary. It can vary. What are some things that causes it to vary? Like, what are some things that can make the dog take longer to fetch the ball? Distraction. Um, distraction. Yeah. Squirrels. Um, yeah, some distraction. Or if the grass or something is too high and he lose it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If you throw it really high and the dog, for some reason, for that throw, it can't find it as quickly. Right. Also, are you going to throw it the exact same distance every single time? Or that could vary too, right? So you might throw yep. it a little bit further sometimes. So many reasons can cause the dog to come back at different times when you fetch. Like when you throw the ball, maybe one the first time it'll come back in two seconds. Another time it'll come back in 10 seconds. Another time it might come back in five seconds. We don't know. 
So imagine you say, hey, hey, dog, go fetch this ball. In this case, the ball is, uh, you know, g- give me this information about the coin, da- coin cryptocurrency API, cryptocurrency data. So while we're waiting for the dog, that's like the dot then. Dot then is, um, dot then, actually, my bad. Dot then is when the dog actually comes back with the information or it comes back with the ball. But while we're waiting for the dog, has anyone like sent a quick text message to a friend or? Yes. Something while your dog is running to go fetch and you just quickly do something? Not exactly, but yes. The contact. Yeah, okay. yeah. Cool. Just like in the delivery example, um, while we're waiting for the delivery person, we can still make some coffee, make some breakfast. We don't have to stop everything until the delivery person comes. We can still do some other tasks. So outside of this, these dot bends, you'll see some code, line of code here, completely outside of this fetch area. This is like the tasks we will do while waiting for the dog to fetch us the ball or the API to return back our data once, okay? So let's take a look at this console.log. I am texting a friend while the dog is fetching, or I am running some other tasks while the API, while waiting while waiting from the API. So imagine this console.log is, I mean, not imagine, uh, it's like some other line of code. So when we read top down, the first console.log we see is this one, right? And then we see this one. But which, what do you think the order is gonna be on the browser? Which, which console.log are we gonna Okay, and yeah, intuitively I might think the first one because it's, it comes before, it's line 11. This one is line 15. So intuitively I might think that, but this, these dot thens are like when the dog actually comes back with the ball or when the delivery person finally uh, arrives and knocks on our door or when the API data finally comes back to our application. Response from API, okay, so got back response from API. Data is, okay, so let's take a look here on the browser. Let's see the order that we see. So we fetch, we, we, we fetch meaning we, uh, we tell the computer, we tell JavaScript to go ahead and fetch us some data from an API. Or we pa- throw the ball and we tell our dog to go get the ball. But while we're waiting for the dog to get the ball back, I can text a friend while the dog is fetching. Or while I'm waiting for, or I could run some other tasks, r- r- run some other lines of code while waiting for the, for the data from the API. So notice this line of code is actually coming first. And then, the, and then whenever the API finally resolves and comes back with some data, or whenever the dog finally has uh, found the ball and come, comes back with the ball, then the line inside of the dot then runs. Well, this first one runs and it's just gonna convert the response to JSON. And then um, here, it's actually gonna, you, you can actually read the response here in this line. So that's why we see, got back the response from the data, from the API. So I'm doing some other tasks while I'm waiting. So that that's called asynchronous code. Asynchronous code is code that does not run in the order that is written. The order that is written is, this clearly comes before this line, right? Line 11 is definitely before 15 but it looks like line 15 is running first because we don't know how long this API is gonna to take to run. So while we're waiting for this data, dot then means when the data finally comes back. So while we're waiting for this data, we can run some other lines of code, even another console.log. Uh, I also, I don't know, um, drink some water while waiting for the dog, some other task. 
So what do you think the order is going to be now? Which console.logs are you going to see first? Are we going to see lines 15 and 16 first or line 11 first? The line 11. Um, Okay, let's think about this. Uh, line 11 is when the dog comes back with the ball finally. But can we do some other tasks while the dog is fetching the ball? Yes. Yes, so these are the other tasks while the dog is fetching the ball. So do you have to put that after that? And that's why you, and I'm guessing I'm asking, um, do you have to put those after the, after the, um, the example when you said the dog is going to going to get, get the I guess the ball and you mm -hmm. said that we can run these while he's going. So do you have to put the console logs after? Oh, like right here. Yeah. Or can you stick them above it? Like, can you stick them above the bin statement? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You okay. Could, okay. You, you could. Um. But uh, the purpose of what we're saying right now is. We can have some code that's running, like, you know, that's doing some work while we do some other lines of code. It can, so we can allow some other lines of code to run while this line of code runs and gets us back to stuff. So while the dog is getting this, the ball or while the delivery person is on the way, we can still do some other tasks. So it's not, it doesn't have to wait for the response to come back before it does these other lines of code. Okay, okay. So we'll see if I refresh this here. You'll see those two lines of code. I'm texting a friend and I'm also gonna get some water while waiting for the dog. And then finally I get back some response. So uh, it tells us this, the API call takes a little bit longer than just lines of code would run in our program. When you make an API call, it could take a varying amount of time. Just like the dog, it can vary in how long it takes. It's unpredictable how long it can take to get us back the data. Hopefully it's quick, like within a second in computer science. Hopefully it's within like a second or so, but um, it can take a varying amount of time. And when it comes back with the data, then we can work with the data. And that then means when, it, when we get back the response, when the dog comes back with the ball. And then these other lines of code outside of that then, those are like the other tasks that we can do while we're waiting for the response to come back. Uh, let's see an example in real life. Speaking of stocks, uh, let's do uh, stock twits. Take a look at this page when I press enter, you'll see something interesting. Notice, notice how some parts of the page, if I refresh it again, Notice how some parts of the page will already load up. And then this graph will finally load up at the end. Or if I refresh it again, you might actually see for a split second, other parts of the page already shows up. And then this, this chart right here, maybe this chart relies on an API. So we could have two different types of web applications. Would you rather have a web application where it has to wait for the slowest thing to finish loading first before anything else loads? Or do you want another web, do you want a different web page where everything that can load will load and then the slowest thing that we're waiting for, uh, it'll load when it comes? Or do you want everything to wait for the slowest part of the application? And is the winner. Yeah, I, I want other parts of the page to load up first while it can and the slower part, it'll load up when it loads up, right? Imagine if this page wouldn't do anything until the chart is ready, then we wouldn't see all this data first, right? You see all this other text, right? If I rephrase one more time, right? right? I can see all this other stuff before the chart even loads up. And then the chart loads up because the chart takes a little bit longer. In our case, I can do all this other stuff, like show a button and do all this before we even get back the information about cryptocurrencies. So I can actually get some work done while I'm waiting for some other tasks to happen. That's called a promise. A promise is when uh, we run some code that can take an indeterminate amount of time 
and we can run some other code while we're waiting for that code to resolve. So I have a quick question, and this is yeah. differently, but what does the async function, if you do async yeah. wait, will yeah. that change how it does like display it? Yeah, uh, that's another way of uh, writing a promise. And uh, that's, that's something that's very valid too. And you can actually convert this to async await by just saying um, async right here. No, hold on. Async right here. And then I can, instead of doing fetch dot then dot then, I could do the await thing, but I'm not, I'm not going to cover that right now. I see. Okay. But that, that's another way to do this. So, yeah. Is that faster in some degree than the it's, uh, it's It's less typing, but um, the foundation is people need to learn how to do this first. And then after they learn this, they'll be better able to do the async await calls. But it's the same concept. I see. All right. Thank you. No problem. Cool. So um, we're. We were able to get data from an external API and log it on the console. But while we were waiting for that data to come back, we were able to do some other tasks, like have these console.logs and have this button show up. OK, cool. Now, let's say I only wanted to get our API information when the button is clicked. Then I'm going to do this on, on click is equal to, and I need to give it some function. So let's go ahead, create a function. Const uh, get data is equal to some arrow function. Inside of this arrow function, I can move all this code over here. And then I can attach the get data function to this buttons on click. So now it will only get us the cryptocurrency data when we click on the button. Let's take a look here now at this uh, React application. When I click on this button, now it's going to give me the response, right? When I click on this button, then it makes it runs this function called get data, and it's going to make an API call. But uh, these lines of code can run before because you know we're waiting for this data to come back. And while we're waiting, twiddling our thumbs, we can get some other work done. So these two console.logs happen first. And then the API data comes back whenever it comes back. We don't know how long it's going to take to come back. In this case, it probably took like a microsecond. It could take five microseconds. It could take 15 microseconds. It could even take a, a, a whole second in some slow applications. But it does come back, uh, mm -hmm. and we get back our data. Awesome. And we have an array of objects. Right Now, uh, let's talk about one more thing with fetch. There's this dot .catch. So dot catch is, have you ever played fetch with your dog and you threw the ball and the ball went like in the sewer and the dog couldn't get it? Or maybe the ball just like disappeared somewhere and the ball, like the dog really couldn't find the ball. Is it like in the era? You said what? Is it like in the era? Like uh, something went wrong? Exactly, yeah. It's like some error that happens. Exactly. So um, in this in this metaphor, imagine you throw a ball. That's fetch, right? I throw the ball. I tell the dog, go get the ball. Or I tell the computer, hey, go get this data. <laughs> go get this cryptocurrency data, computer. But let's say the ball, you know, I threw the ball. It actually fell in some hole on the ground. And now the dog couldn't find it. Like in this case, maybe this uh, maybe this API the server that contains this API is down, or maybe this is the wrong URL. Maybe I misspelled it. Like instead of CoinGecko, I add like another C, CoinGecko. Let's see what happens. We don't, we don't see anything at all. So we want something called a dot catch. A dot catch is if dot catch, it's going to be after this dot then parentheses ends here. Dot catch is going to be if there's any errors, and you can represent this as an error function, by the way. So I give it a callback. It's called callback function. 
And the first parameter, I can name it anything I want. It's generally called ERR for error or ERROR, but programmers are lazy enough to really say ERR instead of error. And if this, since there's only one parameter, I can get rid of these parentheses. And then I can say uh, console.log, something went wrong fetching from the API. And then maybe I'll just show the error. I have this arrow here just to like point. It's not really an arrow function right here, okay? But um, I'm talking about this arrow. This is an arrow function though, right here. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna just console.log this word, ERR, whatever this word is. Like you can name it anything you want, but whatever you name it, you can see the information about that error by console.logging it. Let's see what happens. Since I misspelled this API URL, Is it, is it not? Where's the dot catch? Come on. It's taking a while. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, the dog can't find it. So the dog is going to take a little bit longer to try to find it. Uh, why is this not going straight to the... Can I just get rid of the curly braces? Do one more. So dot catch is if the API doesn't work, then what do you want it to do? Like if the API didn't work, maybe I just wanted to console.log some message about the error. That's what the dot catch is for. Right now, it's, oh, there it is. Connection timed out. It's saying, hey, uh, something went wrong fetching from the API, failed to fetch. And then it gives you some data about what went wrong. So you see this console.log right here, something went wrong fetching from the API. It's this console.log right here. And you could put it in a separate line like this using curly braces. I like to do that, but okay, cool. So that's fetch. And what we can do is now that we got, uh, let me actually make this API URL correct, CoinGecko with one C. When I click it, we got back this response. It's an array of objects. Mm. So what can we do with this array of objects to show it on the page? For every yeah, object, the index. exactly, index. So, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So uh, map it with the, it's, we could do it with the index. Um, so for every object, I wanna dynamically create a div. So for every cryptocurrency object, I wanna create a div with like an H1, kind of like yesterday. For every pet, I want to create a div with the pet's name and their image. I could do that. But in order to do that, this is our response is stored in this variable called response. And it's inside of this dot then. So let's see if the word response is available for us outside of this function. Nope, response is not defined. Response is only defined within the scope of this function right here and also within here. So I want to take this response and I want to save it somewhere. I can save it in a state variable. Uh, I got to do this, use, use state. I got to save it in a state variable and in my state variable, I'm going to create a state variable here. Create state variable array to store the API results in. Let's, and I'm gonna use a use state. And if I wanna create an array, I'm gonna tell it, hey, start off as an array right here. And then here, here's my name of my variable. Let's call this uh, coins and then set coins. I can name these anything I want. So this response, I can store it in my coins variable by using set coins. 
So inside of the second dot, then I'm going to say set coins to be response. Because our response is going to be this array of coins. So I'm going to set coins to be this array of coins. And now that uh, now that I've made it so that we put it in a state variable, what is the best way for me to view my state variable to see if my state variable actually has the data? A console login. Yeah. I could console.log it, but what's it? What's an even better way to look at state variable? Is there a tool that we can use somewhere here to look at state variables? Yeah. React components. Components. So anytime you want to look at state variables, it's actually recommended to use this tab. Okay, cool. Fetch crypto. Okay, so let's see if our state variable is currently an empty array. If I click it. Now it's an array with objects in here. So now my, uh, my data, I have gotten the data from an external API and put it into my state variable. And now what can I do with this state array? It's very similar to yesterday's pets array so that for each and every item in this array, I can create a div. What is the, the built-in method for arrays that I can use? Dot map. Dot map. So I'm gonna use, in order to do dot map, I'm gonna use curly braces right here. And I'm gonna map through coins. Coins dot map. Coins dot map. And it coins.map accepts a callback function like this. First word will represent what? What does the first word represent? Word one, word two. What would the first word represent? Uh, it's going to be whatever name you want, like to iterate through the array. So. Perfect. And it's going to represent each one of these objects, right? Yeah. First word is going to represent each one of these objects. And what is the second word going to represent? The indexes. The index number is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, cool. So let's call this um, coin and then IDX. Since this is going to represent each coin, I, I can even call it coin obj. I can call it anything I want. And then this is index number. Okay, cool. And then here inside of these curly braces, I'm going to say return. So for every single coin object, I want to return, I'm gonna do parentheses, I'm gonna return a div. It didn't autocomplete for me there, that was kind of funny. Okay, and maybe inside of the div, it'll be a h1, or not h1, let's do h3. With the um, coin obj dot, and how do I know what coins have? Like if they have a name or a price, I can look at my API right here, and my data and my state variable, and I can say, okay, coin obj dot, I can do dot name, and then dot current price, dot name, and then paragraph tag price. Price in dollars is gonna be coin obj dot current underscore price. Oh, uh, coin obj. Coin obj dot current underscore price. So let's see what we get now. Uh, and maybe after each div, I'll have like a, at the end of each div, I could, I can make these divs uh, style later, but okay, cool. So if I click it, there we go. We got our data back. I was able to display not just the coin name, but also the coin price. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, US dollar coin. Why is US dollar coin less than a dollar? I think you told it to fetch that when you were like requesting the API. Uh, what, do, what do you mean? Well, when we started the thing, it gave you like the API and you copy and paste the uh, API that you requested yep for exactly yep yeah so that's why it gives me all this uh data because i'm using this api endpoint for fetch so i put that url inside of the fetch here so that's why it gives me the coin information 
And when it gets back to coin information, I'm saving it, save the, so that we can loop through this variable using dot map in the JSX area. The JSX area is the area of the page with the HTML code. So then I can loop through it. And for each coin object, I'm gonna show the coin object that name. Awesome, cool. Any questions on this? Might be a little bit too small. Okay, cool. Awesome. So, um, what you're going to need to do for your Pokemon assignment, uh, I'm going to stop the recording.